have no bananas. We have no bananas today. So that was Yes, We Have No Bananas by Louis Prima. So without further ado. Hello and welcome to Jim the Polyglot. Today's world word is banana. So without further ado, let's talk about the word banana. Throughout this presentation, you might be surprised to see that the word for banana is very similar in some languages that are not at all related to each other. Even though this is very often the case, the word for banana is not 100% universal. So the big question is, why? Well, to understand this question, we first need to find out where do bananas come from? Bananas are an old world crop with many different species. They are believed to have originated in Indonesia and the islands of New Guinea. Archaeologists have found evidence that goes back to at least 5000 BC, but they probably go back even further. The majority of the languages spoken in New Guinea belong to the Trans-New Guinea language family, which is home to more than 800 languages. And unfortunately for us, few of these languages stick out from all the rest. Thus, I was unable to find a reliable dic bilingual dictionary that could give me the word banana. And even if there were, it's unlikely that we would be able to find the exact word for banana from 7,000 years ago, especially since none of these languages had a writing system until the last century. If you do happen to be a native speaker of one of these languages, I would love to talk with you. Please contact me or write in the comments section. Continuing on, although it's difficult to find the word for banana in a New Guinean language, I found it quite easy to track down the word for banana in a number of Indonesian languages. I have the most common, we find Indonesian, Malay, and Javanese. All of these languages and many other languages found in Indonesia come from the Austronesian language family. As you can see, the word for banana in Indonesian and Malay is the same, pisang. These two languages are also geographically not too distant, as the native speakers hail from the north of the country. Javanese, on the other hand, is spoken in the south on the island of Java, and its word for banana is gedhang. Now, just as a disclaimer, I am multilingual, but I do not speak every single language that we will be seeing fluently. So, if you are grounded in a language that I do mention, and I happen to make a punctuation error, please write it down in the comments section. To continue with our question finding our modern day word for banana, which we know and love, we have to journey to Africa. Bananas were introduced into Africa probably via two paths. The first theory is that bananas were introduced to Africa via the people of Madagascar. This is not common knowledge to most people, but Madagascar is not ethnically or linguistically African at all. The people of Madagascar have origins in Indonesia, which put them not too far away from where bananas originate from. For this reason, it should not be surprising that Malagasy is also an Austronesian language. In Malagasy, the word for banana is encontro. Now onto the actual African continent, crossing the channel onto Southeast Africa. The entire African continent is home to a number of not only languages, but also language families. In total, there are over 2,000 languages spoken in Africa. The dominant language family in Southeast Africa is the Niger Congo language family. The first language listed is a language from Mozambique, which is Shitsonga. The word for banana in Shitsonga is Moyomba. The other language listed is Chichewa. It is native to the modern day Malawi. In Chichewa, there are actually three ways to say banana. I'm not 100% certain why there are three words for banana in Chichewa, but I have a few ideas. There are multiple species of banana, just like there are different species of apples. In Western culture, we are much more familiar with apples. There are red apples, green apples, ambrosia apples, and even crab apples. In Southeast Africa, bananas are much more culturally relevant food items. They're just as important as hamburgers are in American culture. They're kind of a big deal. So I would not be surprised to find out if these three words are different words for different species of banana or different ways that bananas are prepared. Another theory that I would like to shout out is that many of these Niger Congo languages have subdialects. These could be different ways to say banana in different dialects. Now, I did mention that there was another way bananas were introduced into Africa. So, our second theory is that the path started in Southeast Asia. If you explore Southeast Asia, you will find that there are two major language families. On the western side of this region, you will find the Taikadai language family. 
Two well-known languages from this family are the official languages of Thailand and Laos. In Thailand, the word for banana is kewai, while in Laotian it is kewai. The word is almost identical in these two languages. In the eastern part of Southeast Asia, you will run into the Austroasiatic languages, which include Vietnam's Vietnamese as well as Cambodia's Khmer. In Vietnam, banana is cho, and in Khmer, it is che. While not completely the same, they really do not differ that much. Our next stop on our way to Africa is India. Just like Southeast Asia, we find that there are also multiple language families in India. India is a very linguistically complex country. There are over 1,500 languages spoken here, but we will just focus on the more well-known ones. Tamil is a Dravidian language, and it is also debated to be one of the oldest living languages in the world. It is spoken in southern India, as well as the island of Sri Lanka. The word for banana in this language is Varai. On our next three contestants come from the Indo-European language family. Now you may find this surprising, but yes, Hindi, Bengali, and Urdu are the same language family as English. But they're definitely opposite uh, branches of the same tree. The Indo-European languages stretch all the way from Europe through Iran until northern India. If you can't tell already, the word for banana in all three of these languages is pronounced almost exactly the same, even if their writing systems differ. Continuing on our journey, we go from India until we reach the Middle East and Northeast Africa. Because of the dryness of the area, bananas do not grow that well, so at an early time, they were probably introduced to the people on the coast of modern-day Saudi Arabia. By the time bananas were introduced to this region, the Islamic Empire was already a powerful state, so it is likely that Arabic was spoken. Another language in the region that is also widely spoken is Somali, a language spoken in Yemen, Ethiopia, and of course Somalia. In Arabic, the word for banana is mus, while in Somali, it is muuska. I'm going to divert off the path a little and talk about the scientific classification of bananas. If you don't already, the classification for all species, whether they are animals or plants, comes from Latin. So, the Latin word for banana is musa. However, the Romans who spoke Latin most likely didn't know what bananas were. And so, from what we just learned about the word in Arabic, it's not too difficult to figure out where the scientists got the name for it in order to Latinize it. And besides, by the time the Arabs had bananas, the Roman Empire was already in ruins. In Central Africa, where bananas were introduced from the north or the south is still a mystery, but they got there somehow one way or the other. In Central Africa, the most well-known language here is by far Swahili. The word for banana in Swahili is Ndizi. We're going to continue west until we reach modern-day Nigeria. Two of the dominant languages in this country are Yoruba and Igbo. We can see right off the bat that these two languages are not mutually intelligible as far as the word for banana is concerned, but the word structure is similar. We see one vowel followed by one consonant, and this pattern continues until the word ends with a single vowel. Now, we're going so far west in Africa that you can't go any further on the continent. This is what is today's Senegal. And finally, we have something that resembles the word banana as we know it in English. This is the Wolof language, who probably said it like Bana'ana. The Wolof people of Senegal were some of the first sub-Saharan African people to talk with Spanish and Portuguese explorers in the 15th century. While the explorers were there, they were also introduced to a yellow fruit called a Bana'ana. As a slight mispronunciation, the Spanish and Portuguese brought these fruit back to Europe and started calling them bananas. The Portuguese and Spanish explorers then bragged to other European nations about their findings, and they didn't forget to show off strange fruits called bananas. The name stayed the same in all of these languages, including English, going even as far as Russia. One thing you should notice is that in Dutch, the word is also pisang, which, if you recall from the beginning of the video, is also the word for banana in Indonesian and Malay. The reason for this is that the Dutch were the first explorers to trade in Indonesia. However, their influence over other European nations was not as strong as the Spanish or Portuguese at the time. And let's be honest, a funny word like banana is catchier anyway. This was during the time of exploration, which was also the same century as when Columbus landed in the Bahamas. Colonization of North America, South America, and the Caribbean followed a few decades later, which was when bananas were introduced into the New World by French, Spanish, Portuguese, British, and Dutch settlers. So if you are wondering how to say banana in a New World language, like Mayan, Inuit, or Cherokee, 
you can now sleep at night with the assurance that more likely than not the word is just banana. Now we're going to change directions. We started going west, now we're going to go east into Eastern Asia. Our first stop is China. China is home to the Sino-Tibetan languages, of which include all of the Chinese languages. These include Mandarin, Cantonese, Shanghainese, Hakka, the list goes on and on. Before we go bananas in China, we have to talk a little bit how new words are adopted into Chinese. Chinese is a character-based writing system. There is no alphabet. Writing in Chinese is like playing Pictionary. Instead of spelling out a word with letters, each word is a picture, which we call characters. Sometimes when new things are introduced into Chinese culture, a few of these characters are selected and put together to make new words. Because of this, new words are often introduced into Chinese based upon describing word meaning rather than by what the original words sounded like. Another important detail when talking about Chinese languages, many different Chinese dialects or languages, depending on how you define the terms, use the same characters, but have different ways of pronouncing their characters. That's what makes them unintelligible to each other. The ancient Chinese made the system thousands of years ago so that everyone would be able to travel from city to city and be able to get around even if spoken words were not the same. Now the moment you've all been waiting for, the way the word banana is written in Chinese. The two Chinese languages that have dominated China are Mandarin and Cantonese. The Mandarin pronunciation of the word banana is xiangjiao, while in Cantonese it is hengjiao. Remember how I said that these characters would have individual meanings and then be slapped together? Now we're going to look at these two characters individually so we can find the meaning for the word banana. Our first character literally means sweet smelling or fresh. This character is commonly used in Chinese as an adjective. For example, na wang tang zhen xiang, na wu tong zhen heng. This means that that bowl of soup smells great. This character is also used in the name of a city in China, Hong Kong. The name of the city literally means the sweet smelling harbor in Chinese. Our second character means any plant that has broad leaves. To give you another example, the kana flower, another broad leafed plant, also has the character in it. So now we put the two together. What banana literally means in Chinese is a sweet smelling broadleaf plant, which if you think about it, is a pretty accurate description. I want to remind you that languages are not immune to change. The English language that we speak today is not the same language spoken 100 years ago, and it won't be the same in 100 years from now. Just think about how long bananas have been around, and then think about how many people in their languages have come across it. Some languages that were introduced to bananas a lot later simply go with the majority and call them bananas, such as Korean and Japanese. This might be for trade reasons. You might have thought that these two would have adopted the word for banana from the Chinese, but this is not the case. Other languages, such as select groups in South Africa, probably had their own word for banana a long time ago. But due to influences from new languages like English and Afrikaans, just decided it would be easier to adapt to new times. Even languages from the place where bananas came from in the first place, New Guinea, have started to do this. Zulu, Hosa, and Sotho are all South African languages that are in close proximity to each other. Tokpisin is a new language that is spoken in New Guinea. It is a combination of the native languages and is used as a lingua franca. Because this language is made up, the word for banana in Tokpisin came from English and is just banana. So as a quick recap, we started our journey into Africa via two ways. From New Guinea and Indonesia, first through Madagascar, second through Southeast Asia, India, the Middle East, and North Africa. We go through Central and Western Africa until we come to Europe. The word goes. Once we get to Europe, the word spreads like wildfire. And then the Europeans in turn bring it to the Americas. At the same time, it gets introduced into China. Other cultures get it later and adopt it from other languages that are either heavily influencing them or constantly trading with them. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Gem the Polyglot. If you have any words that you would like to know how to say around the world, let me know in the comments section.